order of miracles. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get to. When you reach the front desk, do nothing but to stand still. You must not show interest in talking to the worker. Pay no mind to any questions asked, and act expectantly as if waiting for someone. You must not let any other person get the worker's attention. The worker will understand your intentions after about five minutes. If the worker asks you, Are you here for flower viewing? Run as fast as you can until your legs withstand no more. Sleep where you drop, and hope that the first thing you see in the morning is not a cold stare, for it will be the last thing you will see. If the worker stays silent, he will motion you to a door. Pay attention to which door he motions you towards. If the worker motions you towards a door with no handle, you may proceed. If the worker motions you towards the exit, be obedient and leave. Their mercy is not common, and their patience is not unlimited. Should you get directed towards any other door, the destruction of your body and soul awaits you. If the worker motioned you to a door with no handle, approach the door and slowly open it. As you enter and the door closes itself, you'll notice a single corridor extending almost endlessly. Walk through the corridor for a while, perhaps maybe hours, until you notice the walls begin to lose their coloration and strength. You'll eventually be able to see through the walls. There will be a pitiful graveyard full of souls that have lost their way on the other side. A grave with your own name inscribed into it will become visible after walking for a few more hours. Should you try to flee after looking at the tombstone with your name, your feet will be grasped by the hands of the damned. Their fingers will be buried deep on your flesh. Your body will be thrown to the graveyard you saw earlier, and you will serve as a grotesque statue for the hellish landscape until the dead lose interest in you and end your now meaningless life. If you reach to the end of the corridor and you didn't see your grave, you are now in dire danger. Should you manage to pass through the legions of bloodthirsty souls that is now on its way to drag you to hell and torture you endlessly, you shall now know no rest, and you will doubt every single being that approaches you. You will not be able to retrieve this object in this state of fear anymore. If you saw your grave and chose to stay, stand as near from your grave as the wall lets you, and declare in a demanding tone, My destiny has been sealed. You will instantly begin to convulse wildly. Blood will begin to flow from each and every of your orifices. You will lose consciousness after about two hours of suffering. If you do not, pray that the man who will stand before you feels merciful. While unconscious, you will experience your own death. Every detail of your demise, regardless of how horrid, will be revealed to you. You will be tortured and kept alive for days before being granted the luxury of death. You won't be able to see your murderer, but you will recognize their voice. It will be the voice of a person you hold dear, though you will not be able to discern which one exactly. Not many seekers have kept their minds intact after experiencing their own destiny. The vision speaks no lies. The moment you choose to search for this object, you also choose to get murdered by one of the people you trust and love the most. When you wake up, you will be at the place you call home, sleeping comfortably on your bed. You now have a decision to make. Should you choose to stain your hands with the blood of your murderer, your fate will be averted, and the object you seek for will be granted to you. Should you accept your fate and die, you will fulfill your destiny, and your death 
will be a gruesome one. The miracle you will create, should you choose to kill one of your most beloved friends, is object 1666. For a person to be blessed with a miracle, another person must be equally cursed in order to maintain the universal balance. Such is the theory behind God.